You're listening to Civic Media. Stay up to date on the latest news and information for your local community and Wisconsin by signing up for our free email newsletter. Visit civicmedia.us slash email to get started. It's time to get organized with Dr. Craig in Citizen Action. Working for democracy and taking on economic, racial, and environmental issues across Wisconsin and around the United States, here's Earl Ingram with Dr. Robert Craig. All right, welcome back to the Earl Ingram Show. As always, you can join us at 855-752-4842. That's 855-752-4842. It's, uh, you know, it's Wednesday and it's 9 o'clock, so that means the one and only Dr. Robert Craig of Citizen Action uh, is on board. So, Dr. Dr. Craig, a lot to talk about. Man, we're inside of three weeks. I was reading this article in the AP this morning, and it said Republicans challenged more than 63,000 voters in Georgia, but few removed from the rolls. Former Georgia uh, mountains to its Atlantic, from Georgia's mountains to its Atlantic shore, challenges to qualifications of voters have rolled in this summer and fall part of a wide-ranging national effort coordinated by Donald Trump's allies to enlist Republican activists to remove people they view as suspect from the voting polls. Thus far, barely 1% of people called into question have been removed from the rolls. Dr. Craig, what is, what are we what is this? Is is this is this to try to frighten people? From from running, I mean, from voting, one percent. It's that and many other things because <laughs> the Republican Party allowing the big lie to stand in place and the insurrection to stand in place, we know, has led to the big lie on hurricane relief, right? Yes, Which is endangering people, and another attempt at election subversion to win, regardless. So it works at multiple levels. He actually does want to knock enough people off the ballot to win, right, if he can, to win legitimately if he can. But then if he can't, he wants to keep the idea in his base and his party alive that there's all this illegal voting, so then he can try to overturn the election um, in in, in the period between Election Day and January 6th. It'll be a different strategy this time because he doesn't control the Justice Department, doesn't control the executive branch, but he does have the House of Representatives, which could do a great deal of damage. So I know we tend to think Trump is a is a dundering idiot, and in some ways he is. We saw that weird 30-minute, what what was that, a music video, a live music <laughs> yeah. video with him bobbing and weaving to various <laughs> music, including musicians that would want nothing to do with him, like Leonard Cohen, um, <laughs> just for example. But um, I, I, there's that, but this is at least two-level chess. He's, bo- he's both trying to win the election on illegitimately by knocking legitimate voters off and to keep the big lie going so he can try to win the election by non-democratic means if he does not win it in, in the election itself. You, you know, Dr. Craig, you use the verbiage, the big lie. They've been talking about the big lie. Here we are. They, they, the reporters keep asking him if you, you know, and, and those around him, you know, did he lose in 2020? And he's still denying it. And and so those around him are still denying it. It's four years later, Dr. Craig. Is there anybody who believes that if he loses this next time around, that he's all of a sudden going to get religion and all of a sudden accept it? It's not, this is never going away, is it? Whether Whatever he believes, he's not going to accept it, right? So, and the people who are with him, this is the cost of fealty. To, 
to the would-be dictator. So when Henry VIII, people were, will know the reference when I say it, when he kept uh, violating Catholic uh, doctrine of the time and divorcing wives, actually having them put to death, um, everyone stayed who wanted to stay on the rights of Henry VIII said, yes, this is all perfect according to Christian doctrine. The ultimate result was to create a whole new branch of Christianity, right, to break off from the Roman Catholic Church. The point being that you had to have a choice. You could be on the other side of Henry VIII and risk, well, at, at best, marginalization, but at worst, being beheaded. <laughs> and and there you say, yes, yes, of course, this is all appropriate. The Pope is wrong and all of the priests are wrong. And so if you want to stay, look at J.D. Vance. He knows better, but he will not answer the question because he knows that this is the cost of that he is willing to pay in or, for power, you know, the German novel in the 19th century by Thomas Mann, uh, it's the basis for a lot of various movies. So it's a, it, you, people may have heard of it, but it's about someone who sells their soul to the devil to get success. And J.D. Vance has sold his soul. He will say anything in order to become vice president in the heir apparent he hopes to Donald Trump. You know, Dr. Craig, suit seeks to overturn Georgia law on homeless voter registration and voter challenges. So they're not leaving a pebble unturned, Dr. Craig, uh, overturned. You you can, uh, homeless people still can vote legally. They, they don't automatically, they're not automatically eliminated their constitutional rights because they're homeless, but yet they're going after that. They're U.S. citizens. There's nothing in this in the, in the uh, Constitution that you have to have a formal address. Because guess what? If the founding, if the Supreme Court, through its fake originalism, which they only use when convenient, wanted to go back, people didn't have addresses. So of course <laughs> they didn't mean you had to have an address. Of course they'd find a way not to be originalist if this gets to them, which it may well. You know, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Craig, it's piling one thing on after another. Right now, if you listen to, you know, like I do, conservative outlets, and they're constantly saying, well, there's been this big change, and now Donald Trump has really shot ahead, and Donald Trump is leading in all of these different polls, and the bump that Kamala Harris had is over, and, da, 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 da. and if you listen to that, and you and you and you do it, you know, just drinking in everything that they're saying, you'd get frustrated, you'd get worried, you'd get nauseated, and you begin to think that, hey, it's it would we really have to be worried because Donald Trump is gaining even more in you know power when at the root of it, he's not because. His ceiling is still what his ceiling has always been. And he, for whatever reason, Dr. Craig, he just can't move from that ceiling. Is it safe to say that, or are we taking too much for granted? Well, unfortunately, we learned in 2016 the ceiling is just high enough to pull it off <laughs> the Electoral College. Yeah, right. Barely. And so the danger is, is that he may be able to reach this ceiling again. It's been a tie all along. The media uses polling, which they spend a ma massive amount of money on, but it's cheaper than actual reporting, uh, to, to get impressions, to get people uh, watching their newscasts as, an ex as a way not to do actual news coverage. And it's, it's part of the, and that is part of what's why democracy is such a risk is it's the it's the uh, degradation of journalism as a profession and its corporatization, let alone the right-wing noise machine, which is not about truth at all. It's been perfectly, it was already set up just perfectly for Donald Trump by Roger Ailes and company um, and Rupert Murdoch before Trump ever entered the political scene. So it's, it's, it's always been the same. It's like the, it's the fourth quarter we're getting down to the middle of the fourth quarter anyway, right? Wherever you want to say that that we are in mid-October. And we got to pull this out, which means we get all hands on deck. And, you know, 
turning off your TV or hiding behind the couch is not going to help the <laughs> Packers win or the Badgers win. You know, you know, Dr. Craig, um, Donald Trump was at the um, Economic Club of Chicago yesterday. I don't know if you saw any of that footage. I've caught pieces. Here, um, here he is. We're, we're always, it's always fascinating when Donald Trump speaks at, at such, such a place. He had an earlier performance at the Detroit Economic yes. Council or a name like that. Uh, it, 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 essentially the same thing in Detroit. It, it, here he is. Here he is. Here he is arguing with experts, and and so he was talk, and they were talking about his tariff proposals and how they won't work, and how there are even people who are saying his deficits could reach fifteen trillion. And so here is a man who's a world-renowned economist who's challenging Donald Trump on, you know, him talking about something he knows nothing about. And Donald Trump is going to tell the man that he's been wrong all his life. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And it just goes to show the arrogance and the ignorance of this man that people are trying to push to become the president of the United States once again. How stupid can you be to sit before a, a national, internationally renowned economist who's well-respected all over the world and tell him he doesn't know what he's talking about? He's been wrong all of his life, and there were, and there were you know, people in the crowd applauding Donald Trump as if he somehow knew what he was talking about. I mean, he is his, they say brilliance is narrow. He has a very dangerous brilliance. It's a P.T. Barnum, Carnival Barker <laughs> kind of brilliance. No, no, he's brilliant at manipulating public opinion, okay? And at, at, a, at appealing to, to a mass audience and being, being a, playing this television star. It's a new, it's just a new episode. It's a new series. It's not the NFC, now it's Donald Trump president, uh, you know, <laughs> streaming series. I'm not sure what platform it's be Trump's own platform probably, which will be better than all the other platforms. Uh, but I mean, he's, he's unfit for office and he's an ignoramus when it comes to public policy and half the country doesn't care. All right, uh, 855-752-4842. Uh, it's, it's Wednesday. And that means uh, 9 o'clock, Dr. Robert Craig, Executive Director of Citizen Action, and you got a lot to talk about on the Earl Ingram Show. Welcome back to the Earl Ingram Show. As always, you can join us at 855-752-4842. That's 855-752-4842. Dr. Robert Craig, Executive Director of Citizen Action, is on board as he is every Wednesday. Dr. Craig, I, I think that we need to make sure that this part of history is never forgotten. You know, Former President Donald Trump on Monday during a campaign event billed as a town hall outside of Philadelphia. During his closing remarks, Mr. Trump called his opponents evil. Now, with three weeks left before Election Day, former President Donald J. Trump is pushing to the forefront of his campaign a menacing political threat that he would use the power of the presidency to crush those who disagree with him. In a Fox News interview on Sunday, Mr. Trump framed Democrats as a pernicious enemy from within that would cause chaos on Election Day 
that he speculated the National Guard might need to, to handle it. Dr. Craig, you've been in this political arena for a long time. Words have meanings. And here's a, a person who should be disqualified for just making that kind of a statement. He should not be allowed. His campaign should be ended right there from, from saying that he's going to turn the military on American citizens for what? Disagreeing with him. How This should never be forgotten, Dr. Craig. Your thoughts? Well, you couldn't be more right, Earl. And it works at several levels because a lot of his apologists who want to some permission set structure to vote for him or to support him or shill for him will say, let Trump be Trump, but he doesn't mean it. It's highly irresponsible for such a powerful language of person in a democracy to say this, even if he doesn't mean it. Right. Okay, and I think it's an open question whether he means it or not. The point is he may, but even if he doesn't, it's disqualifying, okay? That's what I want to say to everyone. I'm happy to hear from any conservative callers who differ, but this delegitimizes and undermines democracy, even if he doesn't mean it. And I'm not stipulating he doesn't. He may, but let's say he doesn't, um, because the whole concept, it was revolutionary was the military would no longer settle political power. And it was a serious question. We were against having a standing army in this country for, for a lot of our early history because we thought a standing army would take it over because that's what happens. And we see that happen in less countries that have less developed um, de democratic traditions, right? They The military just takes over whenever it feels like it. and we've managed to build, people didn't believe it was possible. Now, it not only was a large scale democracy never thought to be possible and revolutionary and the ancient Greeks and Romans didn't think it was possible. So that was kind of a canon of, of the political theory and political science of the age. Uh, but also they didn't think it was possible of a big army and military that would have such built in democratic civic values that it wouldn't do this. And let's face it, we haven't seen this with sheriffs necessarily around the country. Sheriffs are a dangerous thing if this becomes violent. We could talk about that. Uh, but with the military, my God, they resisted all of Trump's overtures to use the military towards the end of his presidency. And General Milley, um, after being used by Trump, um, uh, acted heroically and took measures to protect the country. And the problem is, is that if you have leaders like Trump long enough, you then put in leaders at the top of the military hierarchy that will give such orders. And that's a real problem for military people because they are supposed to follow, right, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the whole flow of command. And so that's how you unravel that tradition is even saying this. And again, I think there's a real risk that he means it. Right. Well, there's, there's no question, Dr. Craig. And yet, those people who follow him claim to be law and order. They claim to be people who love the police. They claim to be people, and so they elevate themselves. We're more about law and order than any of the rest of you. And what that man said should never be forgotten. And, and so the media should be challenging him at every turn. And, and, and the Republican Party and saying, what he just said, you know, Hillary Clinton was ostracized for talking about deplorables, Dr. Craig, for heaven's sakes. She was run out of, of, you know, an opportunity to become the president of the United States because the other side, the people who she called deplorables, stood up in arms against her and, and, and brought her down. Where are those people at now when this, when this lunatic says what he's saying? And as you stated, Dr. Craig, they'll say, well, he really didn't mean it. That, that, that's Trump's not acceptable. Trump. huh? Trump's being Trump. Yes. Let, let me give a, I, I think we should have even deeper analysis of this. Deep analysts 
and social movement leaders uh, led by a lot of black and brown, you know, young people and, uh, and, 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 you know, organizers long had the view that law and order meant law and order for the people who want to control not for the people that are privileged. And corporate, corporate America and white collar crime has often gotten a totally different treatment or different kinds of drugs. The drugs used more by black people get higher punishments they right. have. There's been some reform there. So let's realize that when Trump and his people say law and order, they mean law and order for you. And there's a term, there's an adage, uh, for my friends, everything, for my enemies, the law. Uh, very well said, Dr. Craig, as always. Guys, hang on the phone lines, uh, 855-752-4842. It's Wednesday, and the one and only Dr. Robert Craig in rare form is on the docket on the Earl Ingram Show. You're listening to Civic Media. Find the latest news, information, and archives of all your favorite shows on the Civic Media website, civicmedia.us. All right, welcome back to the Earl Ingram Show. As always, you can join us at 855-752-4842. 855-752-4842 is Wednesday. That means the one and only Dr. Robert Craig, Executive Director of Citizen Action, is on board. Before we go to the phone lines, never before, this is today's New York Times, has a presidential nominee, let alone a former president, openly suggest turning the military on American citizens simply because they oppose his candidacy. As he escalates his threats of political retribution, Mr. Trump is offering the voters the choice of a very different and far less democratic form of American government. There is not a case in American history where a presidential candidate has run for office on a promise that they would exact retribution against anyone they perceive as not supporting them in the campaign, said Ian Besson, a former associate White House counsel under Barack Obama who leads the advocacy group Protect Democracy. It's so fundamentally outrageously beyond the pale of how this country has worked that it's hard to articulate just how insane it is. Dr. Craig, I, you know, as eloquent as you are, I have to say, <laughs> this guy was pretty good. So Yeah, no, that was very good. So let's go to Gary from Sussex. Good morning to you, Gary. Your thoughts? Well, hi. Hi, Earl. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you okay. say about what he's saying, man? Well, you know, first of all, like I always tell you, Earl, you gotta you gotta settle down. You sound like you're gonna have a stroke. No, 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 no. Um, Listen, man, I'm fine, man. <laughs> I'm fine. You know what? What people should be outraged by this. Okay, this is not settling down. This is this is uncharted waters, and this man should be disqualified for making that statement. He shouldn't even be allowed to run. Earl, listen. Do you really believe 
that he's going to get the military after people like you, other people that didn't vote for him? Do you honestly, in your heart, actually believe that? Ask Dr. Craig that really? question. Dr. Craig, you want to respond to that? I think we don't know, but even if he doesn't, someone in his position of power and influence undermines and delegitimizes democracy and so and the core things we, we've had to maintain it, even if he doesn't mean it. So him saying it, I would say, makes him unfit. And I'd also say to Gary that, and this is uh, my graduate work is in, in rhetoric, um, and this goes back to ancient Greece and Rome, this view, but if you don't show sufficient passion for something, you know, where it, it, where it is called for and warranted, then you actually don't make the argument that you need the passion that is requisite to the to point you are making. And so being dispassionate and not feeling any any particular way about I'm going to take the military and punish my enemies, you know, that actually distorts understanding of what it is. Go ahead, Gary. The thing is this. I'm a principal conservative and Earl knows that. I don't I don't rant and rave. I just say what I think. And because I'm an informed voter, uh, and on both sides, we need informed voters. But if you listen to one side all the time, the propaganda, you are going to be totally distorted on what the truth is. Hey, Gary, is and this what propaganda? What don't, this is on tape, man. This is not propaganda. This is what he said. Okay. He also, he also said that if he's not elected, that there's going to be a bloodbath. But the fact is, you take that stuff out of context. He was talking about China building uh, cars in Mexico and then selling them in Mexico. Is uh, there context know. here? Gary, I know the bloodbath comment. He, he, he had the plausible thing he was talking about what happened to the auto industry. So what is the context for yesterday's uh, comments that, uh, that would make us question that he meant it? Well, First, first of all, I didn't hear it, so I cannot. Well, you on don't. That. Well, but okay. Wait, go ahead. Let, oh, let, wait, let me ask you a redirect. Then let me ask Gary. Gary is a principal conservative and always gives good, good, you know, well thought out arguments. So I really appreciate that because uh, I've talked to him before on this show. But I'm saying, Gary, what information, what evidence do you have that all of us on both sides consider that Trump doesn't mean it? Because that's a really important question as to how we know he doesn't mean it. Let's assume you don't agree to my argument that someone in his position saying it is highly damaging to democracy. So if you don't agree with that, how, why are you so sure he doesn't mean it? And why should we, why should we on the other side take that, that certainty seriously? Because if I, believe, if I believe, and I've been listening to him for years, and Donald Trump is not my first choice. He was not my first choice this year. I, I, I would have been very happy with someone other than Donald Trump. Yeah, but he's but your he, choice now. He is, well, the thing is, I don't have a choice because you he's do have the a choice. person on the, on the ticket. Okay. If, if it was up to me, you guys, I would take Van. I, if we could switch those guys, I would take. Uh, <laughs> Gary, you can't switch on. it. He, answer his question, man. I, I understand. Okay, but knowing Donald Trump and shooting off his mouth and saying stupid stuff, he does say stupid stuff. But the fact of this, if he went out there and, 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 and said what you, guys, what you guys heard, I'm not saying what he meant, but what he heard, what you guys heard, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't be voting for him myself. If I, I don't want a dictator. Gary, yeah, read the newspapers. Talking. This is everywhere what he said, Gary. See, I'm not hearing Gary. I appreciate you make you know being yeah, very thank, thoughtful. Thank you for the call. What you said about you know he's not your first choice, but I didn't hear a reason our side should have faith that he doesn't mean it. Uh, I mean, we need good reasons. That, that that in other words, good reasons is a term. A good reason is something that everyone on both sides, regardless of ideology, could accept as yeah, that's a good reason. All right, let's go to Tom from LA. Good morning to you, Tom. You say what? Tom? Stop with this both sides stuff. Yes, can you hear me, Earl? Yeah, go ahead. I said, my head's going to explode <laughs> here. Let's stop with this niceties of both sides and this and crap and this and that. You know what? Number one, I think Millie and Esper know Donald Trump better than Gary. 
Agreed. They're the ones that have said that he is a fascist dictator, and he is someone that is full of fascism, is what he said. And I'm sorry, folks, but ignoring it is what the Germans did. Just remember that. The Germans ignored it, and look what happened. So I'm, I'm sorry. I can't do this both sides crap anymore. This is one side. This person says bloodbath. I haven't heard bloodbath out of any, um, any other politician's mouth in, on the Democratic side. I don't care if you're talking about an economy, if you're talking about what it is you're talking about. You don't use the words bloodbath when you've already been given the dictatorial powers by the Supreme Court, which then will actually mean more powers by the Supreme Court if he gets more Supreme Court justices in there. Come on, let's stop this both sides crap. What I recommend is everybody get out. First off, let's be really positive in terms of the fact that in Georgia yesterday, they had a record number of votes, uh, 350,000 votes votes in their first early voting day, which is great news. Uh, second, everyone get out and, and that if you're feeling the way I'm feeling, actually go to wisdoms.org and phone bank and do what you can to get not the people like Gary and people that are looking for a reason not to vote for Kamala, but find someone that is actually truly an undecided voter, like a young kid hey. or someone like that, or your grandkid, and get them registered to vote and vote. Hey, Tom, thank you very much for the call. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, let's quickly, um, PJ says, threatening violence is not propaganda. So, you know, I think he's right on point with that Brendan from New Jersey. You say what? Uh, yeah, let's stop trying to make sense to cult members because uh, Gary's a cult member. He may be a good Republican, but a, there are lots of good Republicans that will either not vote and they will definitely not vote for Trump. Okay, Trump wants to be – the guy's had dictators at Mar-a-Lago. He's had anti <laughs> he's had so many screwed up people at Mar-a-Lago entertaining them. The fact that Gary can sit there and try to – and it's always an excuse with them. Oh, he didn't mean that. Oh, he says silly stuff. Like when he was in the bus in 2015 talking about grabbing women by their private yeah. parts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was – that's just locker room talk. Okay, the guy's a clown. He's a liar. He's a fake. And, hey, Gary, please tell us back. Call back and tell us all the favorite parts of Project 2025 that you really like. Hey, hey, Brendan, thank you very much for the call. Dr. Craig, you wanted to respond. Yeah, I'm actually going to give some defense of Gary here. I'm going to say that, look, he's, he's provided the service of having a reasoned conversation and putting things on the table. And that's important to our side because liberals are about the free change of ideas. So he has helped us have this dialogue. He's not convinced us but he has engaged us. And there are some people on the other side that are interested like Gary in doing that, and we should recognize and value that. In fact, as liberals, we should not stop trying to find the commonality in humanity because then we become like the other side. Having said that, the last two callers made a very good, uh, Gary wasn't able to, and he hasn't, he, I caught him off the cuff and he hadn't, he hadn't looked at the whole thing. So maybe the next call he would. He didn't offer reasons that, that where I, I would say are good reasons, and I'm not the only arbiter, that we on the other side should believe Trump doesn't believe it, but both the last callers gave reasons that we should wonder if he means it. And one is what Gary, uh, what, what General Milley and what Mark Esper, the former defense secretary said, and the other is Trump's well-known affinity for dictators. He, he, the way he talks about them, the way he hangs out with them, et cetera. So those are reasons to you know, think, think that maybe he means it, okay? Or may, and so the, last, the, so the last two callers made gave better reasons than Gary, but Gary did us a service by email to try to get down to this question and have this conversation because we always have to do that on our side. We're <laughs> actually about the free exchange of ideas and open inquiry. You know, Dr. Craig, it's the reason, even though uh, sometimes people tell me, why am I having CJ and Gary and those people on? I think we have to have the conversation. The other side does not allow it. And so, you know, I, I think that there I sh we shouldn't be fearful of what the other side has to say. Oh, one thing on CJ. CJ made a very compelling point. He said that 
basically violence is not rhetoric, right? Propaganda is a, an incipient, manipulative kind of rhetoric, right? He's right about that. Now, this so wasn't this wasn't this wasn't CJ. This was PJ. But go ahead. Okay, PJ. PJ is right. But yeah. if it's if it's not propaganda, then he means it. That's the problem. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, 855-752-4842. Uh, guys, hang on. Uh, it's, it's Wednesday. And again, Dr. Craig's never been better is on the docket uh, with Citizen Action on the Earl Ingram Show. Welcome back to what I can't believe is the last few minutes of the Earl Ingram Show. As always, you can join us at 855-752-4842. Uh, Dr. Robert Craig and Citizen Action is still on the docket. Let's go to Jack from Merrimack. Good morning to you, Jack. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, good morning. Um, the reason that this is happening and, and people don't understand or don't believe that Trump can do this stuff partially is because he's gotten away with outrageous things in the past, and you know the the Supreme Court essentially given him a free pass. Um, when when McConnell was asked about Trump's involvement in in January sixth, uh, 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 this is a direct quote. This is what McConnell said. He voted to um, uh, uh, quit. Uh, Trump during the impeachment trial for a couple of reasons. The main one was this should be taken up with the court. But he also stated, and this is a lawyer, McConnell's a lawyer, and he saw all the evidence. There's no question, none, that President Trump is practically and morally responsible for January 6th. And that was stated in February of 2021. And we've done nothing about this. This guy shouldn't even be eligible to run for any office in the country. And um, his entire campaign is based upon generating fear and using that to generate anger and hatred. And his promises primarily are retaliation, retribution, and revenge. Revenge for what? For losing the election, probably. 
the last time. Uh, hey, hey, Jack, thank you very much for the call. Let's go to Susan from Kenosha. Susan, go ahead. Hi. What this gentleman before me was saying is absolutely truth. Um, the people who support Trump are highly agitated right now at this point and you cannot have a, a, a conversation or a debate with them because they're so inundated with propaganda and and uh, getting back at the other party we used to have the two different parties we could talk over our, our our discrepancies or whatever we believed in and then we would come to a conclusion now, when you say something, and it can be the most innocent thing that you say, uh, because I don't talk politics on the street because it creates too much of a problem, but you can say something very innocent, and these people will come back, and they virtually will almost physically attack you with the yelling and the screaming that go on. And the more that Trump whips this crowd up, the more violent this is going to get. Hey, 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 Susan, I wish we had more time. Thank you very much for the call. Go to Don from Milwaukee. Don, go ahead, sir, quickly. Okay, good morning. Uh, yeah, quick, a quick question for you guys. Okay, uh, Trump's talking about these uh, uh, tariffs. Okay, now, we know darn well that the costs will be passed on to the consumers. Now, can't they also, when they file their income taxes, claim that, as an expense, so it's a win-win situation on both sides. That's hey, 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 Don, thank you very much. For your Dr. Craig, what do you want to say as we, you know, we got people on the phone lines, we we just not going to be able to get them in, but Dr. Craig, you say what? He raises a good question, but um, you have to kind of choose whether you're going to try to um, claim state sales, tax, state sales tax or local sales tax, and with the Trump reforms, they're capped at ten thousand dollars. You may recall, remember the, the 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 value of the mortgage interest deduction and uh, went way down, or or writing off your local property taxes. So it would be capped. Um, I guess the problem is with a tariff. You have to. Decide, I don't know if the IRS is going to have to give guidance and say Trump IRS, and they probably won't do this as to how you're going to calculate it, because they're not going to let you write anything off that the IRS doesn't recognize, and it'll be under Donald Trump's control. So interesting question, but maybe a moot point. Well, let's squeeze Bill in from Oconomowoc. Bill, go ahead, sir, quickly. Uh, thank you very much. I think we need a fail-safe plan of operation. On the night of voting, at about 11 o'clock, don't be shocked. Advance and Trump declare victory whether they're winning or losing. Now, if they're put on notice, if they do any of that, there's going to be a standby situation that won't accept any of their craziness. And if they choose to ignore the law, the law will take over. We've already ignored the law, which is the Constitution. Having a hey, convict run hey, hey, Bill, thank you very much for that. You want to respond to that, Dr. Craig, quickly? I think it happened last time the system held. My concern is, is that the other way the right wing controls the law is by appointing judges that will change the law. And do you really trust this U.S. Supreme Court if they're in, if, if they're, if he has much more defensible cases? Dr. Craig, always great to have you on. The listeners love you, uh, as well as uh, civic media. Thank, thank you as always. Thank everybody who made the show go. Uh, up next, Jane Matinair and Greg Bott. Matinair on air. Enjoy uh, the day. Get out and do what we have to do to try to prevent what we unfortunately hope will never happen. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 